no one is taking down the sandbags. The war spread to Aleppo in 2012, in a divided, destroyed city after thousands of deaths, with hundreds of thousands of lost homes. No wonder they're still skeptical a few hours into a ceasefire. This is the west side of Aleppo, controlled by the government. Many more have died on the east side, but the pain of death crosses the battle lines. Not much else unites a country that the war has left in fragments. A soldier showed me a shell improvised by rebels. He said they pack empty cooking gas bottles with explosives, weld on a tail, and fire them from homemade mortars. C4, C, this is C4. So this is, he's saying that this is C4, which is an explosive. You hear a lot of that. Many, 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 ooh, by hundred, by a thousand infijarat. Hundreds, thousands of explosions. Very much, very much. It was a small violation of the ceasefire, but Salat Balad is haunted by years of shelling and by his grandchildren's fears. He calls rebels terrorists. He lost an eye and his son a leg to a gas bottle attack. The murder, this is murder. Killers. They killed the children and the women. We don't know. What happened to Syria? Syria. One day the war will end and peace will start with a ceasefire. C'est dangereux un peu, oui. Father Elias Adas, a Maronite priest, a Christian, hopes that day has come. Rebels destroyed his church. Many Syrian Christians support the regime. Father Elias believes only negotiation will end the war. He backs the ceasefire and believes pouring more weapons into the Middle East leads to disaster. From this church, I call on all the countries of the world to stop the arms trade. The money spent on weapons could feed many people and build a civilization of peace. On the east side of Aleppo, which is controlled by rebels, the cemeteries are overflowing. They've faced much greater firepower than the West. Airstrikes, including barrel bombs, and more recently the power of the Russian Air Force. The ceasefire coincides with Eid al-Adha, one of the biggest Muslim holidays of the year. And despite widespread doubts that the ceasefire would last, parents here, like those near the front line in the West, took a chance. I took my kids to the swings today. It was a risk because I don't believe in the ceasefire at all. I don't trust the regime. It's always breaking promises. But I said the kids should have fun. I couldn't cross into East Aleppo. But this was close to the front line in the old city, a tangle of medieval alleys that used to be the greatest souk in the Levant. Aleppo's old city was an extraordinary human creation. Now it is empty and dead. The destruction here is tragic, but it doesn't match the loss of perhaps 400,000 human lives. Now, let's assume the ceasefire lasts. First of all, for a week and then perhaps for a bit longer. The question is what can be built upon it. Could there be a political process that inches this country away from war and a tiny bit towards peace? Or will it be like other attempts at ceasefires, just a time when fighting men can rest, rearm, regroup and get ready for the next round? Jeremy Bowen, BBC News, Aleppo.